Where is Little Harmony Montgomery? What happened to her? These are questions that have remained unanswered for more than four years in Manchester, New Hampshire. But now, at least one of those questions has been answered. This sweet five-year-old special needs girl was living in a car with her violent career criminal drug addict father, Adam Montgomery, her lying drug addicted stepmother, Kayla, and two younger half-brothers. Harmony was living a very tumultuous life with a man she barely knew. Adam was in prison when Harmony was born, but somehow he got full custody when Harmony's mother missed a court hearing because she was in court in another courthouse for another one of her children. And the judge and the lawyers did not delay the hearing, something that should have been requested by the attorneys and something any judge has the discretion to do. The results of that hearing was a death sentence for Harmony. She was living in a car with four other family members, and that shook Harmony to the point that she was having accidents. These accidents resulted in brutal beatings by her father, the last one killing her. Adam Montgomery was convicted beyond any reasonable doubt by a jury and will die in prison. But this story is not over. Harmony has still not been found. Tonight, we speak with the one parent who loved Harmony. Crystal Sori joins us live for the hour as we continue our investigation into what happened to this little angel. I'm Benny Politan. Thank you so much for joining us. This is going to be an important hour here on Closing Arguments. Harmony Montgomery had a difficult, difficult life. We all know that now, now that we've gotten to know her story to a certain extent. It wasn't easy. Think about it. An abusive killer father. An abusive killer father who was in prison when she was born and some way gets custody. I mean, let's not start down that road because that will drive you crazy. It's inexplicable. It was outrageous, but it actually happened. Not only an abusive killer father, but then an evil stepmother who did nothing to protect this little girl. Zero. Nothing. Lied. Lied some more. Lied again. Um, the only one who was looking for her was her mom, Crystal Sori. And, and Crystal struggled with addiction issues, addressed those issues, um, but lost custody. And then Adam just did whatever he could to avoid any contact with Crystal, keeping Harmony away, and now we know why. Now we know why. So in this case, there was a trial. You saw it here on Court TV. Um, but it was a result of Crystal Sori making noise and looking for her that Adam Montgomery was questioned, that Adam Montgomery was arrested, and then Adam Montgomery was tried and convicted of the murder. Before we speak with Crystal Sori tonight, I want to show you some of what happened during this trial that made so many of us sad, angry, and heartbroken all at the same time. The defendant committed multiple violent crimes against a small child, a helpless child. In December 2019, he assaulted and he murdered because of that rage, his rage. He destroyed Harmony so that he could never be caught. Adam Montgomery did not cause Harmony's death. Kayla Montgomery was the last person to see Harmony alive and know how Harmony died. But she didn't come clean with Adam. She didn't come clean with the police. And she will not come clean with you. Did you take her and put her in the ceiling of your room at the fit shelter? No. Did you smush her? into a CMC bag like the one I showed you earlier. 
No. Who did those things, Kayla? Adam Montgomery. Kayla, I want you to look at these jurors. Kayla, did you kill Harmony? No, I did not. Did you beat her to death? No, I did not. Were you alone with her when she died? No, I was not. The more accidents she had, the more he would get angry and he would hit her repetitively. When he would hit her, she started getting black eyes and bruises on her face, on her legs. Did you see him put Harmony in that duffel bag? Yes. How did he put her in there, Kayla? <laughs> He, like, folded her in half and put her in the double bag. So when you saw her in the kitchen with this black eye, uh, what, if anything, did you say? It's OK. Take your time. Something along the words of, oh my God, what did you do, Harmony? And did, who answered that question? My nephew, Adam. Where was he? Standing he... right behind her. And what did Adam say? She didn't do anything. I bashed her around the house. She won't get the burial that everyone deserves. She doesn't get a headstone in the ground above the head that he battered. She doesn't get to be at peace and death because of what he did, because he can't afford to tell anyone where she is. He believes Harmony's life and death are a waste of time and that they weren't anything to him and that he dumped her like trash. This is what you've seen in the evidence. This is what you've heard the defendant say when you consider whether he has an extreme indifference to the value of Harmony's life when he killed her. He had no value for her life when he killed her. He took an innocent life, a child for no reason other than his rage and his indifference and his ignorance and his lack of humanity. Because this trial is about Harmony Montgomery. When did you last see Harmony? April. April 2019. Of, April of 2019? Yeah, right. Before Easter. How did you see her? Oh, um, I was doing a Facebook video call. That's my girl. That's Harmony. When the two of you were living together, how was Harmony? <laughs> um, amazing. <laughs> Rambunctious, you know, very smart. By the time she was two, um, you know, she could tell you her whole life story. <laughs> she was talkative? Yes. People didn't believe she was two. And joining us as our special guest this hour, Harmony Montgomery's mom, Crystal Sorry. Uh, Crystal, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I, I know that you're not feeling 100%. But my guess is, is that Harmony's giving you a little extra strength to, to be on with us tonight. She always does. Um, let me start here. And I don't know if, if you were able to feel it, um, but I know here, d day in and day out, here at Court TV in the newsroom, um, people were feeling it. Um, when, when, when you go out and people talk about the trial to you, we're feeling it. When I read what's happening on social media, you feel it. That people um, loved that little girl and they were feeling some pain because of what you went through and what she went through. For those folks who never were blessed to meet Little Harmony, 
What did we all miss? So much, you know, so much. Oh, she was so funny, you know, and uh, she was so much like me, you know. Um, hearing that during trial, you know, I said it from the beginning. I said, you know, he did what he did because he couldn't stand that she was more like me and nothing like him. And she, she loved to sing and dance and, you know, um, she really liked to make her, her friends feel good. And if she saw someone sad, you know, she was wanting to try and make them happy or do something that she, like to help, you know, like if she saw people sitting outside, she would automatically say like, mommy, they need something to eat. You know, they're, they're hungry, you know. Um, she had a huge heart in such a small body, you know. I I just can't, and I mean, I won't ever be able to wrap my head around the pure rage that he had towards her when, when all she did was be born. That's all she did. She didn't ask to be here. She didn't ask to be um, born by, you know, two addicts or any of that, you know. Um, she deserved so much more. And when, she, you know, she was here with me and Michelle, she, she did live a, a really great life with us, you know. We, we made sure that she was always happy and had fun and was always doing different things. And, um, you know, we also tried to get her the help that she needed while she was with us. You know, being in, in play therapy or, um, you know, the, the few services that Michelle had her in. Um, she loved school. She only got to go for one year, but she loved it. Barely a year, I think it was only a few months, but she really loved it. Um, as you can tell in, in the picture with her backpack, and she has a, her hair in a ponytail, and she has her ABC shirt on. Um, she really was so excited to go to school, and I, I just feel like he took so many things from her. Um, because obviously he didn't want people to see what he was doing to her. Um, you know, he, he never brought it, he brought it to one urgent care appointment. She never been to the doctors, never school, nothing. It was like she didn't exist to any of like the government in that area. Um, but there's so much about her that isn't said, you know. Um, she was blind in her right eye, but she didn't let that stop her. She didn't let that stop her. And when she was misdiagnosed, like, you know, they said she was going to be special needs. They said, you know, she was going to be developmentally delayed. And she was none of those things. She was none of those things. They were wrong. They were so wrong. Um, you know, when she got around kids, she would, you know, um, she just would want them to, how do I say it? She would just want them to be happy. like no matter what it was. Like, if she saw someone angry, she'd be like, well, why are you mad? Can you talk to me? Like... What child does that? She That's, was, that, that is amazing. Yeah, like, That's you know, amazing. She, oh, gosh, she was... Um, I, I would call her an old soul sometimes, you know. Um, I say the same thing about Jameson. They have that in common. Um, they are so much much more mature than you ever would think they would be at their, their, their age, you know. Um, people really did not believe her age, you know. And now, thinking about, it's been, you know, four years and she would be nine. I, I just think of all the things that she would be doing right now, how she would be thriving, you know, if she was here with me. So that's really what I think about a lot, is where is she and what she would be like today. You know, we covered the first trial of Adam Montgomery, and he said something at his sentencing. I want to I wanna play that for a moment and then ask you a question about it. Yep. I understand that I was found guilty by a jury, and I'm not here to dispute that at all. Um, the only consideration that I ask of you this morning is for you not to consider anything as it relates to the case regarding my daughter Harmony. I did not kill my daughter Harmony, and I look forward to my upcoming trial to refute those offensive claims. He said he was going to refute it, but we looked in the courtroom every day, and he, he didn't show up, Crystal. 
your, your, your thoughts about Adam not having the guts to show up and face the charges? Well, he's shown us all what type of person he is. He's 150% a coward. He only hits women and children because he can't face a man. Um, and he makes sure that if he thinks you're even a tiny, tiny bit afraid of him, he is going to use that. And he was going to do whatever he can to manipulate you or um, play on your emotions or play little mind games. Like, th what goes for me, what I go back to when, he, when I think about him saying that is the, the choice of words. He could have used any word other than offensive. He could have said horrendous. He could have said disgusting, disturbing. He could have used any word and he chose offensive because it offends him that people know what he did. It offends him that he no longer has control. It offends him that people see him for who he is and not the facade that he makes people believe. So the way I think about him, he's a coward and he's not even worth the poop on my shoe, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> so at, this trial obviously had a, many difficult moments um, for anyone to watch, let alone Harmony's mother you at the moment where it was described by the state's witness Kayla um, what actually happened at the moment that Harmony was taken uh, from this earth when when she was murdered by Adam were you inside the courtroom for that moment um, so there there were two days where they did it um, I was there for the second day, I wasn't there for the first day. Um, but even still, like, even if I missed a day, I would sit and just watch everything I missed, you know? Um, so you, you, and that's and, what I was wondering, if it, how, if you wanted to not yeah, hear it, it, or if it was okay to hear it, so you wanted to know that, you wanted to hear um, what had happened. There was certain parts where I did, I did get up and walk out um, because I know it's different coming from her, but if you think about it, I have heard this and been told this and read affidavit after affidavit, document after document. So this is like literally all I've heard for the last, you know, uh, almost four years. So hearing it from her was totally different than reading it on any paper, um, especially with uh, the lack of emotion in a lot of things that she said, except for the only thing she cried about was describing what he did with her body, basically. She didn't cry at all when she described him beating her, punching her multiple times and that. She didn't drop a tear one time when, during that. And I thought that was very strange, very, very strange. Um, if, you, if, if something traumatic like that happened to you and it happened to a, a little girl you claim to have loved, you're going to cry the whole entire time you're speaking, not just when he talked about putting her in the duffel bag. Yeah, I, um, I agree. I agree. I, I found a lot of, and a lot of folks found a lot of problems with, with uh, Kayla Yeah, Montgomery. her testimony to me is just very strange, very, very strange to me. She... Um, she can convince the world that she was afraid. Yeah. I do not believe that. I do not believe that. If you were so afraid, you would not have conceived a third child while my daughter was in the vent above your bedroom, above your bed with That's, that man. You wow. would not have conceived a child. Wow. And she did, and it happened to be a girl because that is how God works. And guess what? She don't get to have her daughter either ever she don't get to be around those kids and you know what that's the best thing for them let me ask you this because this is, you know what they have a chance they, yes yes that is important and yeah. i mean throughout all of this there's still more children which is yeah um, 
Harmony was a victim, but so were those two boys. Absolutely. Let me ask you this. This trial that we all watched, do you believe that the truth came out inside that courtroom? I do. I really do. I feel like um, there were some things that obviously were left out, but I feel like the um, just the amount of like witnesses they had and, um, you know, Adam not being in the courtroom, um, you know, her testimony of like barely having any emotions and whatnot. Um, I think it really had a lot of people in the world that were like had missed things or had things, some things mixed up the timeline. And I think it clarified a lot of things for people. Um, and also, you know, they got to see it for exactly what it was, like a nightmare, like a, a horror movie, like, you know, it, nothing was sugarcoated. And I feel like Ben Agati and Chris, they did incredible. Oh, um, they, absolutely. They absolutely did. They, incredible. I mean, and, and what you're saying is so important to understand the reality of what happened here. I mean, this and it's hard to believe that it actually happened, but it did. Crystal Sori is staying yeah. with us the whole hour. This story is not over, folks. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about the search for Harmony. She still hasn't been found. Plus, coming up next hour. In Santa Fe, New Mexico, another big day in the courtroom in the Baldwin movie shooting trial as the jury sees Hannah Gutierrez's police interviews. We are live from the courthouse with all the big moments. But it still is a prop gun or a prop. It's a real gun. It's a real, real gun. gun. I wish I would have checked it more. I'm the armor. Or at least I was. A famous actor in a movie. Movie set accident that ended in tragedy. I turn and time goes off. Now, Alec Baldwin and the film's armorer have both been charged with involuntary manslaughter. Just because it's an accident doesn't mean that it's not criminal. Court TV takes you inside the courtroom as Hannah Gutierrez faces a jury. The Baldwin movie shooting trial. Live coverage weekday mornings. Only on Court TV. It's important that we find her for dignity, for respect for another human being. It's, it's not about a feather in the cap. And uh, none of these people here, none of all those agencies that I listed, it's not about a feather in the cap to say that we found her. It's about this is what she deserves. That's what you deserve. That's what I deserve. Everybody has that level of dignity that they should be afforded. And Harmony is just like anybody else. She deserves to have that too. And so the search is going to continue for her until we're able to find her. The search will continue, and the story's not over. Harmony Montgomery still has not been found. She has not been recovered. Uh, Harmony's mom, Crystal Sori, with us tonight for the whole hour. Crystal, how important is it for you that Harmony is found? It's so important. Um, you know, I just feel like she's not at rest. Um, you know, that's literally what I think about every day is, is where is she, where is she, you know, um, I want to bring her home. I don't, I, I don't plan on burying her. Um, I plan on, you know, bringing her home, cremating her, you know, so she can stay with me where she belonged, you know, um, and I would also like her brother to have a part of her, you know. He really loves his sister, so um, it's not just for me. It's for my boys, you know? I want them to know that I never gave up looking for her. I never stopped fighting for her. Um, and that she, she is so important, you know? She is. Um, and nothing that happened to her, she deserved. So, you know, it's, it's, it's only right. Um, it's hard for me to just carry on knowing that she's out there alone in a CMC bag, you know, it's, so that's the mission for, um, spring, late spring, we're gonna, um, start planning searches and 
you know, I'm going to get as many people as I can. Um, because we won't stop until she's home. Absolutely. Adam has not, and I hate having to bring him up again, but he knows what he did. He knows what he did with Harmony, and he has not revealed any of that. Is, is he that spiteful, that controlling, that if he feels he can control even one part of anything, he will hold on to that until the end? So from what I, from what I'm understanding, his hatred for me overshadows doing the right thing for his daughter. He doesn't want me to have her. That's what it is. It has nothing to do with the authorities finding her or any of that. He doesn't want me specifically it's, it's the spite towards you to have her. That he can, he can con control this part of your emotion, this part of your life. Yeah. And this is the only thing that he's holding on to. Yeah. He has it's the last shred of control he has left. And he's going to use it as a pawn, just like he always has. You know, I feel like he's going to say it, if he does ever, he, he'll say it on his terms, on his time. And do you believe... He won't say it just because we're begging. <laughs> right, right. And there'll, there'll have to be some, something somewhere in it for him. That's, I mean, to me, that's the only yep, way. Yeah, exactly. Do you think it he shared it with... To... Do you think he shared the information with anyone else? I, I think Kelsey knew. I've felt that in my heart since day one. I feel like she knew, and as, mu as much as they said, you know, her, her death wasn't suspicious, it was. It was suspicious. The timing and everything, and the fact that he was with her after Kayla and all that, um, and getting rid of cell phones and this and that, she had to have known something. You know, there's no way you're gonna follow this man around and get rid of stuff in kiosks and, and he's acting erratic and you're not questioning anything. No, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. I feel like he, he told her and she didn't want no repercussions and none of that, she couldn't handle it. And whatever happened, happened. But I believe Kelsey knew. And, and for folks at home, Kelsey is the woman you're seeing here with Adam Montgomery, who he was with after he left Kayla. And we see yes. her, and, she's, and, and she, she, like she died in a, in a hotel grave. somewhere. Yeah, I believe it was New Hampshire. And, and that's the thing to me, she wasn't from New Hampshire. She didn't know many people, she knew Adam. She was from Maine. If, if you think about all the little details about Kelsey, she wasn't even, she was an alcoholic. So it's just, uh, it's very, I don't know, that part to me, that piece will always be very suspicious and I feel like she took it to the grave with her. What you may have um, But, you know, and the other person we know obviously is Adam. Now, when you, you talked about organizing some searches, some, some areas have been mentioned. Um, by investigators and, and the prosecutors here. The Tobin Bridge, Rumney Marsh Reservation, Sales Creek, Chelsea Creek, North Shore Road, Route 107, U.S. Uh, Highway 1, sort of this six mile radius around the uh, Tobin Bridge area. What are your personal thoughts? Um, are, are you, f I, and I don't know how well you knew Adam before, um, you had harmony. We were together since uh, we got together in uh, late 2010, um, and we didn't have harmony until 2014. So I was with him four years prior. So knowing him for that amount of time, are there any of these areas where they've searched, or where, or within that six-mile radius of the Tobin Bridge, where they were able to track that U-Haul to, that? stand out to you as, oh, this is an area he talked about, this is an area he knew about, or this was an area he would frequent? I'm, I think they're on the, I think they're really on the right track as far as, like, the marsh, the Romney Marsh and the Revere area, um, 
also what resonated for me is because I have I've had this consistent dream for like the last four years and it, there's always the same sound in my dream um, so when when the um, incinerator was mentioned I thought it really resonated with me because um, I'm assuming it makes you know machine sounds or some type of sound um, you know when it's running or working or whatever and I always hear like a sound it sounds like machines and it's like it's in the distance but it's close enough that you can hear it um, and I feel like I, I do feel like she's she's come to me in my dreams and she's she's tried to show me a little bit of where she could possibly be because the, that Romney Marsh really resonates with me for some reason. Um, in my dreams, there's water, there's, there's wet grass, there's, um, there's like barrels, like barrels, maybe a sand, salt, I'm not really sure. Um, but I remember these details and I've written them down, you know. Um, and then I, I go and I, I look on the maps to see if anything that I've written down match up. And that's the closest that I've come so far is, is, is the Romney Marsh. And obviously when, when... So I feel like they're on the right track. Absolutely. So when we get to springtime, let's stay in contact here so um, we can help publicize this search and help get some bodies out there uh, to help oh, find yes, harmony. for sure. All right, Crystal's going to stay yeah, with we're us. we're going to need all boots on the ground. Absolutely. <laughs> like literally boots in the marshes, of course. Yeah. Um, Crystal's yeah. going to stay with us. When we come back, we're going to talk about Kayla Montgomery. What about Kayla Montgomery? She's trying to get out on parole. Kayla, you, you referred to Harmony Montgomery just now. How do you know her? Um, she's Adam's daughter, and, um, we started a year after we got together. He was working on getting custody of her, and he had to work to get custody of her. He wasn't just given her, and... Um, it took four years to get custody of her. Do you recognize this? Yes. Who's depicted in this image? Her, me, and myself. Did you take her and put her in the ceiling of your room at the fit shelter? No. Did you smush her into a CMC bag like the one I showed you earlier? No. Who did those things, Kayla? Adam. Montgomery. Kayla, I want you to look at these jurors. Kayla, did you kill Harmony? No, I did not. Did you beat her to death? No, I did not. Were you alone with her when she died? No, I was not. He said he thinks that he really hurt her. But he felt so big. When did you realize that Harmony had passed away? When Adam was trying to wake her up and she didn't, she didn't, she didn't reply or anything. Was he saying things to her to try to wake her up? Yeah, he said, uh, he said Harmony and he kept saying baby girl. Like, and trying to budge her, and there was nothing. Kayla, why are you currently incarcerated? For perjury, um, for lying on, um, to the jury about uh, the whereabouts of where I was and where Harmony was. And those perjury charges put her behind bars. Um, she is going to be eligible for parole, has a parole hearing coming up. Take a look, folks. It's coming up uh, on March 7th of this year, a parole he hearing for Kayla, Kayla Montgomery. Uh, Crystal Sorry, Harmony's mom, still with us. Um, Crystal, your thoughts tonight about that parole hearing. Are you going to request to be heard? 
Um, I'm going to do my best to be there. Um, it's, it's, I, I was told it's only a 10 minute uh, hearing and living in Fitchburg, my son gets on the bus at 8.20, so it's, it's like a time crunch. I'll probably barely make it. But I do know Michelle is going to be there um, in case I can't get there on time. Um, so I'm not sure if she's going to say anything, though. I'm, I'm not sure about that. And what, what are I your... I am going to write something and send it in. Absolutely. That's... If you can't be there, at a minimum, yeah. you know, get, get... Be heard. I mean, to me, every yeah. time parole board is making decisions, you want them to get as many sides as possible so they're not like just focusing in on oh what she says let's let's get the whole story in front of the parole board um what are your thoughts about kayla's role in all of this and the way it was portrayed during the trial um so i i get what they had to do with as far as her testimony and given her this deal or whatever the case is because um, they needed to get him, you know, which I understand that. Um, the way that Adam was portrayed, though, like, I have to clear something up because it's not true at all. He didn't work four years to get Harmony. He never went to a class. He never went to groups. He never took parenting classes. He never did any of it. There is not one shred of evidence that he put any time or effort into getting her. All he did, what I can tell you what he did do, is he forged paperwork proving that he had a job when he didn't. He had it for like two months and then lost it. Um, he was trying to prove he was doing all this stuff and that he was clean and he never was. So the fact that they were high the entire time they had my daughter and I lost custody of her for having um, substance issues, not even being high, I was just at risk for major relapse, you know, and I kept going into program after program, I kept doing all these things, I wanted her, I was, you know, proving day in and day out, never really missed, I missed one court date, that was that one court date I missed, and he never went to court dates until he decided he wanted her, until just he woke up one day and said, yeah, I think I want her because she's a meal ticket and I can get some social security for her. He never wanted her to better her life or to get to know her as soon as he got custody of her it was to me he said to me i have so custody i get to make decisions for the rest of her life and you won't have a say that's what he said to me and i'll never forget that he said that to me because he didn't want her to like ha so she could have a good life he wanted her to say he ha he got her it, she was his it's it's that con it and gets back to that same control. That same control, right? If I can, because yep. he can't control you, right? You're done with him. Yep. But in order to yep. get to you, he uses her and I control her, which is his attempt to try to control you, your life, your yep. emotions, your recovery, everything. Yeah, yep. When I was having the visits, the two visits I had, he was ruthless. Like, I mean, had me walking on eggshells. Like, if I, if I got a tone with him, he would threaten to never let me see her again. If I questioned something, he would threaten to never let me see her again. If I farted wrong, he would threaten to never let me see her again. Like, it was that bad. Like, he knew he had me in the palm of his hand where he wanted me. We just saw a picture yep. of Adam and, and the, this tear, the teardrop tattoo. Is that a teardrop tattoo that he has? And is there any story yes. behind it? that you know? Well, he told me that, you know, he got it in prison after he did something. I don't know what it was, because he lied so much during our relationship. I could never tell what was the truth and what wasn't, you know what I mean? He, I, I used to call, um, what, what do we used to call him? C tall tales, because I'm telling you, man, this, this, this dude had stories for days. Any, every city he had a story for, like all different, all these different scenarios, like, I said, you tell more stories than Mother Goose, like, <laughs> you know. Um, also, his nickname was Mr. Know-It-All because um, he will argue with you till the end of time because he believes he's, um, like, right about something. Because he's, he's, he's the smartest man. He's always the smartest man in the room. Just ask him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um,
But we, like, we do, like, if they decide for Kayla, like, hey, we're not going to let you out on parole, and they decide to have another one, we'll be at whatever one, whatever court dates we need to be at, because I don't believe that she should just be out and frolicking around and, you know, um, yeah, she lost her kids, yeah, you know, she lost her man or whatever, I wouldn't even call him that, um, you know, but she didn't, she didn't lose a life, you know what I mean? Like, she didn't, she has the possibility to see her kids when they're adults, when they decide, hey, we want to, we want to find our mom or whatever. I don't have that opportunity ever again. So, no, she should never be able to get out, regardless of, of this deal. I get it. I knew, I know they had to do that. And as far as her getting out and doing well, she won't. She won't. And so I'm not really, if she does get out, I'm not really worried. I'm not worried about her having this great life when she gets out because I know for a fact she won't. Well, Crystal, so, we're, we're running out of time tonight, but we're <laughs> going to stay in contact because you're going to be doing those searches in the spring, and we absolutely yes. want to be in, involved with you in all of that. So. Um, I hope you feel better. I know, again, you're under the weather today, but thank you so much, uh, Crystal. Um, and if we can, on the way out, just take a shot so we can see the shirt, and I'll say yeah. good night to you, Crystal. Thanks so much. Thank you, Vinny. I appreciate it. We'll be back. Bye.